8.4 Multiply and Divide Rational Expressions This comic is not meant to show any violence at all, but just about the feeling. The feeling when you guys cancel fractions incorrectly, it's actually so heartbreaking. Sometimes I grade the papers and I'm like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? Algebraic atrocity, yuck. And so don't cancel your fractions incorrectly. It just is heartbreaking to all of us. So let's start with simplifying rational expressions. If I have a times c over b times c, well then the c's simply cancel out and I get a over b. Don't confuse that with a plus c over b plus c. In this case, I cannot simplify. Do not cross out those c's. Similarly, if I have a plus c over c, don't just go crossing out those c's. Don't do it. Do not. This is equal to a over c plus c over c, which is equal to a over c plus 1. You see that? If you cross out those c's, you would have been left with a, and that definitely would have been wrong. So don't do these things, just don't. Now I ask you to simplify. Well, we'll note the only time we could cross things out was when we got it into a totally multiplication problem. So our goal is always going to be, can we get this into a multiplication problem? Because if we can, then we can go crossing things out. As long as there's plus and minus signs, we cannot cross anything out. Let me show you what I mean. Let's try and factor the top and then we'll try and factor the bottom separately. So to factor the top, we have an x and an x. What makes a 16? A 4 and a 4, and we need a negative and a negative, and we have an x and an x. What makes a 24? A 6 and a 4, and we need a positive, so plus and minus. And now you'll see that we have this times this over this times this. In essence, I've gotten rid of the plus signs that connect my terms. I have this quantity times this quantity over this quantity times this quantity. The only time I have pluses and minuses are within the quantities. So now I'm good to go. Now I can cross those out. You see the difference? I had pluses and minuses here. Now I've gotten rid of them. And now I just have x minus 4 over x plus 6. When you want to multiply rational expressions, well, a over b times c over d, you just multiply the top, you multiply the bottom. In addition and subtraction, you have to get common denominators. Multiplication and division are just much, much easier. So when we do this, well, we can just go canceling out tops with bottoms to simplify, right? Uh, divide the top by 5 and the bottom by 5, we get 1. 3 over here. Divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3, we get 9, 1. Let's see, we have an x squared here, so we can cross out one of those x's with one of those x's. Let's see what we can do. We can cross out 5 of those with 4 of those. It leaves us with 1 on the top, right? x to the 5th divided by x to the 4th, just 1x on top. Let's see, the y's we can cancel out all of these and we have one more left on the bottom. Okay, so I have x times x left on the top. I have y times y. Oops, my 3's there, my 9's there. I could have simplified this even further down, couldn't I have? Divide by 3, divide by 3. So I'm left with 3x squared over y squared. And that's my final answer. Another algebra no-no that people are tempted to do is like take the square root of the top and bottom because they see a squared and a squared and they like want to get rid of it. No, you can't just randomly do stuff like that. When you do something, it has to be meaningful and purposeful. So if I divide the top by x, I can divide the bottom by x. I can do the same thing to the top and bottom, but I can't randomly do operations. I can't randomly take a square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. That's not okay. The only reason I can divide the top and bottom by the same number is because it's in essence multiplying by one. So really, remember that. The only thing we ever do is multiply 
or divide by one or any variation of it. Okay, so now when I go to do this problem, I'm not going to touch it until I make it into all multiplication. So factor first. When I only have the two terms up here, let's see, I see that we have the 5x in common in both of them, and so I'm gonna factor that out. Again, the way I knew to factor something out is, well, first of all, whenever I approach a problem, I try and factor out something first. That's always my first step. And when I just have two terms, the only thing I would be able to do is factor out something. When I have three terms, that's when I do the parentheses. Okay, so take the 5x out here, we're left with four minus x over, in the bottom here we can factor out an x, so we have x times x minus one. Don't forget that one, right? x divided by x is one, don't forget about it. If you have two terms to start with, you should have two terms in the answer. Now let's see, let's factor this guy. We have an x and an x, we have a four and a one, we need a plus and a minus here, and on the bottom, well that's a difference of two squares, isn't it? x squared minus 16, x plus 4, x minus 4. All right, so the x plus 4 and the x plus 4 can cancel out. The x minus 1 and the x minus 1 can cancel out. The x's can cancel out. Now, we have a little problem. We have a 4 minus x on the top, and we have an x minus 4 on the bottom. They look so similar that we're tempted to cross something out but we can't just go crossing out. So let's think about it. Let's rewrite the top, minus x plus four. Leave the bottom. Now, in trying to get these the same, why don't we factor a negative out of the top? Let's try factoring a negative one out. x minus four. Aha! Now I have the x minus four and the x minus four, so I actually got negative one. In fact, anytime you have a minus b over b minus a, you are going to be left with negative one. But again, not anything that needs to be memorized. You can just kind of prove it to yourself, as I just did there. And the reason that I factored out the negative, the reason I knew to do that, was again because I wanted the top and the bottom to somehow be similar. Actually, I wanted it to somehow be the same. And so by factoring out the negative, I would get a positive x on the top. And so that was all I could think of doing, and it worked quite well in this case. So now I know that when I cross out this with this, I'm left with negative 1. And so my answer is just negative 5. Let's go to do this problem. Leave the top, x minus 4. Now I'm going to note something about the bottom. I really want to factor this. I know that all these problems I'm going to be able to factor all over the place. So I do notice here that this is x cubed and this is two cubed. So we have something of the form a cubed plus b cubed. You might remember that we were factoring a cubed plus b cubed early in the year. And the equation for this was just a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. I will give you that formula. I really don't care that you memorize that personally. And so the a is just x and the b is just 2 in this case, so we have x plus 2, and then we have x squared minus x times 2, 2x, two plus b squared, 4, times, and now I'm tempted to try and factor this, except that I realize that this and this are actually identical. And you know what? You might not have realized that. So you might have tried to factor, and you would have been like x, x, 2 and 2, hey, that doesn't work, and then you erase it, and you're like, well, what else? 4 and 1, and you're like, hey, that doesn't work, and then you erase it. And then you're like, oh, it doesn't have any other possibilities. So you look back at your problem, and you're like, oh, look, they're identical, yay. So you erase this. So we go just with the x squared minus 2x plus 4, so there we go. We went through a thought process, crossed these out, and we are left with x minus 4 over x plus 2. Done. We would never cross the x's out. We would never cross a four and the two out and get a two. No, no, no. Don't make the dog cry. Now, when you divide, you just multiply by the reciprocal, otherwise known as keep it, change it, flip it. K 
keep it, change it, flip it. And then you multiply A times D over B times C. So formally, that's called multiplying by the reciprocal. We change this into a multiplication and we flip this. Only the second thing is what we're flipping. Keep it, change it, flip it. So now let's divide. Let's keep this. Change this and flip this. All right, so now let's factor x and x, 7 and 3, minus and plus, yeah. The bottom, well, we can take out a 5, x plus 3. Here, look, we have a difference of two squares, x plus 10, x minus 10. And here, well, what do we have? We have an x and an x. We have a 10 and a 7. We have a plus and a minus. And look, factor that. You see, we have no pluses and minuses anymore. That's the only reason I'm crossing out. We have this times 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 this. It's okay to cross out now. Cross those out. And then I forgot to cross these out. And so I'm left with x minus 10 over five and I am done. You cannot simplify this any further. No, 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 we are done. If you're asking me, however, can't I write this as one fifth X minus two? Yes, yes, you can do that because I just have a single thing on the bottom. I can divide each term. That is okay to do, not necessary though. Okay, let's divide. So this is over one, so keep it. change it, flip it. I'm gonna be honest, if I was doing this problem, I would never write this step here because I would just start factoring down and keep it, change it, flip it while I'm going through the process. If you wanna write this step, you can, but it's completely not necessary. You'll probably not wanna write it after long. So we have a three X and an X here. Let's see what we can make happen here. Maybe a five and a two. Why don't we go for a plus here and a minus here? That seems to work because we have 15 minus two is 13. And then keep this. On the bottom we can factor out an X, but that's all we can do. We have three X minus two, but that works quite well because this is gonna cancel out with this. And I really can't cancel out anything else. These x's can't cancel because that x plus 5 is a quantity. It's attached with the plus sign. You cannot cross out when there is a plus sign. So we have x plus 5 over 6x squared times x, otherwise known as x plus 5 over 6. x squared times x is x cubed. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.